today I will be talking about the SK Observatory, SKO, which is a multinational radio astronomy facility. So, you know, uh, poised to deliver world-class science, <clears throat> but today I will not focus, focus on the science. Uh, I will explain how we are really uh, endeavoring to build a sustainable radio astronomy observatory. So maybe starting with, uh, with the, you know, the, to set the scene with the SKO's mission, as you can see in there, our mission is to build and operate cutting edge radio telescopes to transform our understanding of the universe and to benefit society through a global collaboration and innovation. So that second part is really, really relevant, obviously, for the, for the topic of today. Uh, and that's what I will be talking about. But uh, as you can see, it's right there in our core mission for the observatory. So we just set the scene very briefly about uh, 21st century astronomy. So sorry for those of you not familiar with the, with the electromagnetic spectrum that you can see here. It's basically the light which is emitted by objects in the universe. And what we can see with our own eyes is just the, you know, the visible part here in the middle. And you can use bigger telescopes, optical telescopes to, uh, to, uh, to have access to even you know, more information <clears throat> about that part of the spectrum. Or you can use some other facilities on the ground or in space to observe you know, different phenomena in space. And if you go to the left-hand side here on the radio regime, you can see the radio, uh, the radio regime uh, and you can see all these facilities. So many of them are sort of part of the SK uh, endeavor, and I will talk about it in a minute. We, we call them the SK precursors and pathfinders. And you can see uh, just you know, around the corner or just, you know, we can see it on the horizon, the SK telescopes, which are about to be built and, uh, in, in, in Australia and South Africa. But as I said earlier, we are an international observatory at the SKO. And we actually have a unique footprint uh, around the world. As you can see with the, the, the dark blue here represent all of our partnership, many countries being members of the observatory and others being observers in the process of joining as a member. So we've got 16 countries and we really bridge the gap, you know, north, south and east, west as well, bringing together countries from the five continents. And uh, an interesting fact as well is that 11 of these countries are part of the G20, six are part of the G7, and three are part of the BRICS, which is, for those of you not familiar with the concepts, which represents Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. So the last three are, are part of the SKO partnership. So it's really a, a unique endeavor, which has a number of ramifications in terms of the impact as well, as we'll be talking about in this talk. So who are we? We are an intergovernmental organization, just like CERN that you heard about just now, like ESA, ITER, uh, ESO, uh, and others. And we are one global observatory building two telescopes on three sites. So the headquarters is in the UK, uh, the George Bank, Bank site that you can see here on the left-hand side in the shade of the uh, majestuous uh, Lovell telescope, which is uh, quite fitting, a fitting scenery for us, obviously. And then we are building these two telescopes, one in South Africa and one in Australia. And the sites have been chosen because we want to be as far away as possible from, from us, from, from ourselves, from humans, from civilization, because we, we don't want interference uh, generated by humans. And the total project cost is over two, 2 billion euros. So that's for the construction of the telescope and for the first 10 years of operation. I said I will not be talking about science, so I just have this one slide here, uh, which is quite daunting. It represents you know, roughly the, the breadth of science cases that the SK telescopes will be able to address. So it goes from the, you know, like uh, um, looking at the first stars, the formation of the first stars and galaxies after the, after the Big Bang, uh, to, the, to the pulsars, the study of the pulsars and the gravitational waves to try to challenge uh, Einstein's the uh, theory of relativity. And we'll also be looking at, uh, you know, trying to understand what dark energy is, what dark matter is, and also, you know, if there is uh, life out there to try to detect it. So as you can see, it's really, really wide and it, 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 uh, it covers the entire uh, spectrum of astrophysics and cosmology. Right, but today I'll be talking about, you know, uh, the socioeconomic impact of, of, uh, of the SKO. And so just to give a definition here, um, it's basically the, the non-science impact is basically the contribution uh, that research makes to economy, society, culture, and 
sustainability. There are many definitions out there. That's the one we are using. And I will give it, be giving a couple of examples for each of these categories uh, in a few minutes. Just to give a, a bit more context as well, in the last few years, the, the impact seen has evolved dramatically and uh, the non-science impact uh, is, now, <coughs> is, now, sorry, uh, is now a clear driver for investment. So it's not only a byproduct of investment in large scale research infrastructures, it has really become part of your, of your business case, you know, the driver for investment. And it is certainly true in the, in the case of the SKA. And as early as in you know, 2010, so over like 10 years ago, 13 years ago, this was you know, thoroughly discussed uh, by, our, by our partners as well to make sure that the, 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 the impact beyond science would be really, uh, would be really defined. Um, and as I said earlier, we are an intergovernmental organization. This means we are governed by a convention, a treaty, which is a, this high level document, which has been signed by, the, by, by, um, by countries, by, you know, by ministers in, the, in, the, in our countries. Um, and so you can see it here, actually, I've got a photo of the first page of the convention, which is a very prestigious document. And this is the preamble. What you can see here is the preamble of the convention, which basically gives like a number of high level principles, uh, high level statements from countries. Um, and what's interesting for us is that one of them, as you can see, I will highlight it here. One of, the, one of them is exactly about what we are talking about here. Embracing the potential for scientific discovery to contribute to advances in technology and innovation and to deliver a broader benefit for industry and society. So it's right there, it's right in our, in our uh, convention. So that means that our members, they are expecting us to deliver on that commitment, which is what, exactly what we are planning to do. And so what we do, we usually relate, uh, and my, my colleague from CERN you know, uh, did the same as well. We relate to the, the global challenges because it's, this is something that people know, in particular, the policy, policy and decision makers. It's something, something that resonates with them. And so we usually link our activity, non-science activities to the SDGs. And so here you can see them all on, on this slide. And actually uh, what I've done here is really highlighting those SDGs that we are directly contributing to as, as a radio astronomy observatory. So some of them you know, can seem pretty obvious like quality education, uh, decent work and economic growth or industry innovation infrastructure. Others, not so much, you know, they, they don't, they are not necessarily linked to, uh, uh, to activities like the ones that we are undertaking, like you know, radio astronomy, but in effect, we are addressing all of these SDGs that, we, that you are seeing here on the screen. In a humble way, you know, let's be humble here. You, we are only one observatory, but we are trying to do our best to, to really play our part in uh, addressing the, these global challenges. But when we talk about impact uh, in, in the SKO uh, partnership, we need, to, we need to, uh, to, to give a bit more explanation. We, as an, as an uh, intergovernmental organization, we are pretty young. We, are, we were born only two years ago. Uh, so it's really early days for us you know, to start engaging on that impact journey. It's only just starting. But the SK project itself, it's been in the, in the making for over three decades. So the impact of the SK project goes much beyond just the observatory. And it involves a number of countries I, 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 uh, I showed you the map a bit earlier about all these countries involved. And it is fair to say that across all of these countries, in particular, the host countries, the telescope host countries like Australia and South Africa, there's been a lot of investment and a lot of work being done the last few years in terms of developing R&D, in terms of building skills, in terms of developing science, engineering and industrial capacity as well. So all of this is already generating impact locally, nationally, and globally. And so what we are planning to do as an, as an observatory is really to build on this and to expand this impact even further. So now I will focus, again, I will give a few examples on, on these four pillars uh, of impact, starting with the economy, bearing in mind that this, I could take an entire week <laughs> almost, you know, to talk about a number of impact stories and case studies across the partnership. So I just highlight a few here just to give you a taster of, of what we are talking about. So this one here is coming from China. 
and it's talking about some summer schools which have been taking place uh, in China. And actually, this is the case in many other countries as well of the uh, part of the SKO. And it's really about equipping university students with the skills in data processing, in uh, imaging capabilities, and the schools, you know, they've been training hundreds of students over the last few years from all over the country. And some of these have already become uh, successful researchers in their own country and taking part in, uh, in, uh, in growing the radio astronomy field in China. So this has already uh, a very important impact. Uh, and then I've got another one here, which is about the SK dishes, which we are building as we speak. So it's, it's another collaboration, global collaboration in action. And here you can see the flurry of activities which are taking place now across many countries. So the main dishes, uh, the main you know, reflector and the pedestal of the dishes are built in China, manufactured in China, but other parts are built in Sweden, uh, in Spain, in Italy, in South Africa. So that's really in all of these places, there's a lot of innovation going on and there's a lot of you know, highly skilled jobs uh, which have been created just for that, for the, for the, for the production of these dishes. Another great example coming from South Africa. So these are some data uh, from South Africa. An impact assessment uh, has just been done, actually. So it's really, it reflects all the investment that has taken place over the last 12 years in South Africa, uh, which, which covers a range of human capital development programs in South Africa, but more generally across Africa as well. And as you can see, it has enabled hundreds uh, of individuals to benefit from training, from bursaries. 1,400 grants have been awarded uh, since, to, since 2005. Uh, 250 K euros were spent only last year on training. So that's quite impressive. It's big numbers which are already having an impact in South Africa, but uh, as I said, across uh, several African countries as well. And we as an as SKO, as the SK Observatory, we are determined to you know, to, to follow that trend as well. And we are working very closely with our partners from the South African Radio Astronomy Observatory. And we want to play our part in the local economy and the national economy of our countries, developing skills, supporting the social development opportunities and uh, promoting the local heritage as well. I won't go into the details, but obviously you can uh, go back to these slides afterwards. This is a snapshot uh, of you know, the, the total amount which has been invested in South Africa through all of these programs uh, already. Societal impact, another important one as well. So this one is, uh, is, uh, is a great one as well. That's like a, an astronomy festival. There are many uh, around the planet, obviously. This one is an example from Australia, the Astrofest festival, which has been uh, taking place for many years now. And it's already attracted tens of thousands of visitors, you know, young people, family, and so on. And really a great way to enthuse the next generation, to inspire people about the wonders of, of the universe, and more generally, you know, the, 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 uh, the relevance of, of science and basic sciences for, for humanity. And it's a great way of inspiring kids and to, uh, to, to get kids into, uh, into STEM disciplines as well going forward. This one here is another very, very fantastic example as well, which is, uh, which is only for a couple of, from a couple of years ago. Uh, it's a great impact story from South Africa. It's a formidable example of skills transfer from radio astronomy to other parts of, of society, in this case, the medical sector. So during the COVID pandemic, the government entrusted our partners from the South African Radio Astronomy Observatory to, to design and to build respiratory ventilators. There was a big shortage of ventilators in South Africa and very expensive ventilators. And our colleagues, thanks to the expertise that they had gained in building a telescope in South Africa, they were mandated by the government to design low-cost ventilators, which they did successfully in a matter of months. Uh, and then these ventilators you know, were manufactured and, and spread across the country in all the hospitals in need. Uh, and, and that was revolutionary and really, you know, life-saving, literally life-saving. So, you know, isn't it a fantastic example of how basic science can have a direct and immediate, you know, impact and ramifications in society. This one as well has been touched upon by my colleague, science diplomacy. 
just like CERN, uh, the SKO is another great example of, of uh, science diplomacy tool, which allow to, allows to foster international connections, encourage these high level connections, and really act as a vehicle for collaboration, for peace and for development as well. So that's something, uh, something uh, which is you know, another element very important in our, in our partnership. The culture, uh, impact on, on, uh, on the culture. This is another great example from, coming from Australia. So here we are talking about uh, an agreement, which we call the Indigenous Land Use Agreement, which, uh, which has been signed now after many years of negotiation, being signed between the, the Wajari Yamaji, uh, who are the traditional owners uh, and native title holders of the site where the, our telescope will be built in Australia, and the Australian government. So that's an agreement which is absolutely essential for us, which is, if you like, a, a social license to operate. It establishes work, working practices uh, in terms of the, the preservation and promotion of the cultural and heri of the cultural heritage of these places. It really establishes establishes a true partnership between us, the, the SK Observatory, uh, and the Wajari Yamaji, the, the, the traditional owners of the site. And it's also a way of ensuring that we provide uh, job opportunities uh, for the in, uh, Aboriginal populations around the telescope site. And so there's a number of you know, education opportunities, uh, scholarship, apprenticeship, which are part of this agreement, which we will be, uh, we, which we will be delivering and which, which will be uh, valid for the next 50 years of operation of the, of the telescope. And as part of the signature ceremony, we were, we had the privilege to be granted uh, a name by the Wajari Yamaji for the for the for the, the site uh, of the telescope, which is Inyarimanya Ilgari Bundara, which means sharing the sky and stars, which is a fantastic name that they they uh, they gifted to the site. Um, another example of of cultural impact of uh, a project like the like the SK Observatory. You know, it's really about being embedded in the art and pop culture. So, for example, recently, uh, the last few years, we developed an uh, exhibition, art exhibition, indigenous art ex uh, astronomy exhibition, bringing together artists from across the, the two sides of the telescopes. And, uh, and this exhibition has been touring around the world. And it's a great way of reaching out to the art enthusiasts and maybe the hard to reach audiences not really interested in science, but interested in art and to tell them about the, the beauty of the universe and how relevant that is as well. Uh, so that's a great exhibition we, that we have, which we're really proud of. And we also have occasionally appearances in the pop culture, in you know, TV series, cartoons and books. And so here I've got one, which is uh, from a few years ago. Uh, some of you will recognize the Big Bang Theory, great, uh, great uh, TV show. And if you look uh, closely in the, in the back here, you can see some of the uh, SK posters that we, we developed for the occasion. So again, a great way of being there you know, in the pop culture and, and being embedded in, in, in society. And I will finish by a couple of examples on the sustainability side of things, um, something very important for us. So renewable power. Here you can see a photo uh, of an off-grid solar hybrid power station which is already used in Australia to power the site, uh, so to power one of the telescopes. And now that we are building our own telescope, we are planning to expand on this, uh, on this PV station uh, and to really make sure that we are using, uh, we, we've got a high level of penetration of uh, renewable. So that's, that's great. This one that you can see here, it's a 1.85 megawatt solar array, so quite impressive. And then an, an interesting fact there is that you know, 800,000 uh, liters of diesel and 2,000 tons of CO2 per year have been avoided just because of that, because of the installation of that station. And again, bear in mind that we will be building one even bigger than that. So, so the impact uh, uh, on, or the non-impact on environment, let's say, uh, will be obviously very, very relevant. <clears throat> and just to say that for us, an additional challenge is that we need these stations to be radio quiet as well. So that comes with a number of complexity, which we, which we are addressing as well. And then just to, to finish on this slide, just to list them, some other initiatives. As I said, I mean, there's, there's so many that I, I couldn't list them all, but 
uh, initiatives around the uh, sustainability. So in South Africa, the area around the site of the telescope has been declared a national park, uh, which added over 3% to the, to the already existing surface of all the national parks in South Africa. So that's quite impressive. And obviously that allows you know, to extend the preservation and the protection of species, uh, the removal of invasive species, and it's uh, very important for research as well in terms of monitoring and, and, and so on. And in Australia, as I said, you know, very important for us to respect the communities around the telescope site. There's been a number of what we call heritage wall covers, which have taken place the last few years. 600 hectares of land have been covered to ensure the full protection of the sacred sites and the cultural areas of relevance for the, the Aboriginal community, the Wajari Yamaji just to make sure that we don't disturb these sites which are sacred for the popul local populations. And we stay, you know, we stay clear of that. So we had to move some of the stations for the telescope elsewhere, just you know, because we want to protect these sites. And this work has been led by the, the Wajari elders in collaboration with our partners in Australia and some archeologists and anthropologists as well. And our role now is really to document and to protect this uh, heritage and site. Again, I'm sorry, I really had to, you know, to cruise through a few of these examples today. Uh, obviously, you can have much more information on our website. You can see here on the left hand side, uh, uh, dedicated uh, section of the website where you can have other examples of how we are benefic benefiting society. And uh, you can also find a foundational document, which is the, the construction proposal. And in there we've got uh, like an extensive paragraph about the impact as well, uh, if, you, if you want more information about it. So I thank you very much. And obviously feel free to, to get in touch if you want more information uh, about what we do. Thank you very much. Thank you, William. Uh, so since we have a couple of minutes left, I, I will take the chance um, to ask you a couple of questions, if this is fine. So sure. you, you were talking about the socioeconomic impact. Um, do you have some figures? How diverse is SCA, the, the staff, in terms of you know gender, age, uh, nationalities? Yeah, so we've got, uh, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but we've got over 25 nationalities uh, at, the, at the headquarters uh, in, the, in the UK. Um, and now we are building the teams in South Africa and Australia as well. And so what we want, we want to ensure we've got diverse, diverse teams uh, of people. So we are recruiting internationally. Um, and in terms of the gender balance, again, I don't have it in front of me. It depends depending on the functions uh, in science, engineering, business enabling. Um, we need there's some more work to be, to be done. Obviously we are, reflection of the of the entire field for example in engineering fields unfortunately um, you know there's uh, there are much more men than women we are a reflection of that but I think we are doing pretty well we are you know above the the curve but again more work is being done so we are participating in a number of initiatives to really try to appeal you know to the to uh, to a wider audience and make sure that we that we uh, yeah that we uh, we are attractive to uh, you know to uh, female applicants for this sort of job and so on. And uh, we've got some role models in the organization as well. We are doing some public engagement uh, talks just to, yeah, to say, you know, there we are, we are open, you know, to, to, to anyone, wherever you come from, you know, whatever your, you know, your, your uh, ethnical background is or whatever we, we, we want to welcome. We are inclusive. We want to welcome everyone. Thank you. And um, I was actually very surprised um, about the um, construction or development of respirators during the pandemic. Uh, do you know if um, Sky is also involved in any other kind of uh, medicine development or that was an isolated event due to the pandemic? And uh, I also wonder where the authorities approaching you, I guess. Yeah. So during the pandemic, I guess, like everybody else, especially at the start of the pandemic, we were wondering, what can we do? You know, how can we help? And I know that I, I didn't list that here, but across the partnership, many of my colleagues, even in, you know, in communications and in, in some other fields as well, found some use, you know, using their own skills to, to help tackling the pandemic. Uh, in India, for example, colleagues developed, there was a lot of fake news, well, just like everywhere else. But I've got this example in mind, uh, you know, which has been told by Indian colleagues, 
a lot of fake news. So they use their communication skills to, to, to tackle that and to develop some, uh, some, you know, some fact sheets and, uh, and material you know, to really uh, convey the actual information about, the, about you know, the, what we knew at the time you know, about the, the, the disease. Uh, just to try to, to, to tackle all, all these fake news. And so redirecting their skills and their experience into that field. Uh, other examples in, in, in several other countries as well, uh, the development of some, uh, some apps in Australia, some astronomers developed some apps you know, to track the, uh, track the, you know, the uh, COVID-19 you know, across the, the society that was used you know, to, to great effect. But no, I mean, apart from that one-off, you know, the uh, skills transfer to, to develop, to design and develop these ventilators, uh, not really. This was really a one-off. Again, we are talking about colleagues who, you know, starting from scratch in South Africa in the early 2000s, in a matter of 15 years, have built capacity, have developed the skills and so on. And they've, they've built what is now the most, the world's most powerful radio telescope. Okay, so, you know, they acquired a number of, they did a lot of mistakes, obviously, they learned a lot of lessons. And in all this process, you know, developing their engineering skills, systems engineering uh, and project management skills, they demonstrated that they can, you know, they could do it. They could make sense of, you know, a complex system and build uh, the world's most powerful radio telescope. So the government say to them, okay, now we've got some other challenges, you know, namely the lack of ventilators, we want you to use those skills and to transfer those skills onto that. It took just a matter of months, literally, you know, for them to discuss with the experts, medical experts, to understand the needs of the patients and so on. This, you know, look at what, what was existing in terms of the ventilators and try to break it down and to develop low-cost ventilators, which they did. And that's, that's just a fantastic story in itself. Definitely, thank you. So it's a pity that we don't have much time uh, to keep uh, listening to all the interesting examples that you are showing us. Thank you.